should have a bigger impact on the Baltimore Ravens this season, the coaching staff or the personnel? Why total passing yards may actually mean a lot more for the Baltimore Ravens than you think. Could David Coley being hired by the Houston Texans as a head coach actually be addition by subtraction for the Baltimore Ravens? These and many, many more on this episode of NFL Questions from subscribers. Don't get mad, uh -huh. it's just what it is. It's what it is. Yeah, we talking sports, shout out to Graven YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's Engraven here with another video and another episode of NFL questions from subscribers this is a series where you can ask me any NFL question you want to based off of any NFL team and we answer it in a video just like this now if you want to be part of NFL questions from subscribers you can send me an email to team keep it clean at gmail.com or for the patrons you can send it directly on patreon and again, speaking of the patrons, shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. If you want to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenvids. Uh, either way, I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. We got some very, 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 very good questions like we always do. And remember, do not let anybody kill your vibe. Nobody. Negative energy, move it right out the way. Let's do it. First question came from my guy, Matt J. Now, this question it may not be good anymore because by the time y'all see this video, the move most likely will have already happened because I'm recording this on May 31st at 9.35 a.m., but we'll see. Anyway, he said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and your family are well. I wanted to chime in on this Julio Jones trade talk. The only way I see the logistics of this working out is if they trade Sammy Watkins. Can't sacrifice Bateman's time, but... If we get Julio, he's wide receiver four behind Julio, Hollywood Brown, and Sammy Watkins. You don't waste the first rounder for a wide receiver four. So Watkins gone is the only way this works. I could not disagree more. No, you don't do that. The Ravens, they have, they pay Watkins a one-year, $6 million deal with five mil of that guaranteed. You ship him away, you not only eat what you're paying Sammy Watkins, but then you eat Julio Jones, uh, his cap room as well. I mean, his cap hit as well. No, you keep that because you're going to have to pay it anyway because it's guaranteed. So, no, Sammy Watkins. And, and, and again, even, even if it weren't, even if his money wasn't guaranteed, I would still say no because why not provide Lamar? If they were to trade for Julio Jones, I, I don't think that the Ravens are going to get him. Hopefully I'm wrong. I, I, I know 50 million reasons why the Ravens should get him, but I just I think it's going to be one of those scenarios where it's like, oh, well, uh, the Ravens, they tried, and they just didn't want to give up this much, or they didn't want to give up this pick, da, 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 but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but why would you not want R Lamar Jackson to have the, the most wide receivers and the most high-quality wide receivers? Like, I, I feel like it's a no-brainer. So if they were to acquire Julio Jones, he would obviously be a lock. Sammy Watkins would, Hollywood uh, or Hollywood would, but anyway, uh, Rashad Bateman would, Tyler White, and you let them boys battle it out. And and the, the quality of that receiver group could be amazing, so no. Next question came from my boy Mike H. He said, hey man, it sounds like the first day of OTAs went great. Turnout was high. Everyone seemed to be locked in, focused, and ready to get that Super Bowl. We've come close so many times before, and I feel like it's just a missing piece or two that has held us back. Do you think it will be the new coaches or the new players that have the greater impact on the season ahead. Um, I don't think you can just bring it down to uh, to one or the other. Uh, reason I say that is because both have super significant impacts on the Baltimore Ravens as a whole. That is a very, very, very good question, though. Um, but you have coaches. If the coaches don't call the right plays, if the coaches don't use players to their strengths, if the co coaches don't have the players doing things that, that fit the best of their abilities, then... No, it's just, it's, it's most likely not going to work. Uh, now, with the players, if the players don't execute, if L Lamar throws a bad pass or L he throws an interception or something, if a, a wide receiver drops it, if a running back fumbles it or drops it, if a defender doesn't tackle, doesn't wrap up, drops a pick, it's just so many different things that could happen and, and so many different people that could have an impact on the game just as a whole. That's why, again, winning a championship in the NBA is a lot easier than in the NFL. But anyway, that's a whole other conversation that we had on the podcast. But for football, everybody has to get that thing rolling. Everybody has to be clicking and everybody has to be on the same page. That's why when you have successful teams, especially when you have a team that's been successful for so long, 
it's it's hard to maintain that success and you got to give credit where credit is due so i can't say it'll be one more than the other or anything like that but they definitely are both gonna have to have significant impact uh to keep this thing moving forward and take that next step in the playoffs next question came from my boy oscar he said what's going on in graven i had a question for you the media as well as fans say that the ravens are in win now mode which i get we are definitely in super bowl window at this point but how fast is the window really closing? Yes, Lamar Jackson will be expensive, but I'm not sure if he is really going to cost so much that the window will be closing. He is a special talent, and I think as long as we have him under center, we will be a playoff contender. What do you think? Stay safe and keep it clean, my guy. I appreciate you as always. No, I appreciate you, Oscar, and thank you for that. Now, um, when they say, well, when we say uh, the Ravens are in win now mode, because they certainly are, um, but with the Super Bowl window, what, what people mean when they say the Super Bowl window is closing, um, what they mean is that, yes, Lamar is a special talent. We know that the Ravens, they're going to be winners as long as they have Lamar in the center. We've seen that. Uh, we've seen that since his rookie year, uh, and we've continued to see that success. His, the impact that this guy has on this team, and yes, he is a quarterback, cause, and quarterbacks have a huge impact, but like Lamar's impact is like, it, it's crazy. Um, but what they mean when they say that is, is the pe the team around him, the players around him, the talent around him. This is the Ravens opportunity. And not even that after they even pay Lamar, like, oh, okay, all of a sudden you pay Lamar, you can't have t talent around him. That's not the case. You just may not be able to pay as much, uh, to the talent around him, uh, as you could before the contract. So with Lamar, once he gets paid, it's going to be that much harder to really build this team around it. You can still find a way now, but you're going to have to work a little extra. Um, so, it's, it's yeah, Lamar makes us a contender, but the team around the, around him makes the, them even, even more and even bigger and even better contender. So that's what people talk about when they say the Super Bowl window is closing. Uh, it's, it's just that... The, the time is closing to where Lamar Jackson is about to get paid and everybody else around him, they're not going to be able to make the same kind of bucks that they're making now. Our next question came from my boy Josh. He said, does total passing yards matter? I used to always be saying empty calories about total passing yards. I wanted it not to matter because that's not what we had. And besides, when the offense is looking unstoppable at times, it did feel wrong to worry about lack of total passing yards. But I think I was wrong. I don't mean they matter in any given game. In fact, they don't even predict win-loss records over the entire season. But it may be that total passing yards tells us something about the offense that matters completely off time so the idea is volume of passing plays also means variety of passing plays generally speaking uh, last in the league in total passing yards probably means come playoff time we have only a handful of passing concepts we are comfortable with mm. that's a, a, a really really good point I remember you brought this up uh, in a live stream before and you did say yeah that 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 makes that makes sense that makes a lot of sense because it's like if you don't if you don't, uh, if you're last in the league in passing, which the Ravens have been maybe the past two years, I think. But either way, if you're last in the league in passing yards, um, that doesn't mean you're an unsuccessful team. It just means that, yeah, you don't you don't really need to pass much. You, you, your passing may be efficient, um, but you it, it may be simple stuff. It may be simple concepts. You may not really incorporate all these different things into your scheme that really elevated moving forward. So again, hopefully they push forward. And again, what I kept saying, like Ravens, they don't have to go from 32nd to 15th overall in passing yards. They don't have to do that, but they can make a jump to like, I think even 28 would be fine. 20, 27, 28. And, and the thing is, just a few more catches here and there, a few more completions here and there, a few more of those deep balls here and there. Like, they're like, they're, they're, they're right there. They just need a, a, a little more. But anyway, uh, back to what he was saying. He said, Jackson Kruger Sports uh, recently was talking about how the Bills game, the pick six, was one of these. Uh, he showed this play multiple times in the regular season. It's where they rely on Lamar to throw it to a basically not open Andrews over the middle where only he can get it and for Andrews to either box someone out as he makes a catch or to find a little space. Hmm, I got to watch that. He said in that video, he was also showing how the Ravens adapted after uh, halftime and were throwing to combat the blitzing. Shame it took that long. <laughs> Fire Greg Roman. But 
when they got to the red zone, they ended up using one of their tried and true. Oh, okay. So he's saying they switched it up, uh, moving the ball down the field, but then uh, they went back to uh, one of their plays that they always went to. And this is what, what I see what he's saying with the, the volume of the uh, the passing yards, meaning that would probably mean more passing plays and more diff different concepts and whatnot. So, okay, okay, I, I feel you. But when they got to the red zone, they ended up using one of their tried and true. And that defender was reading it the whole time. Maybe even staying very still to try and be inconspicuous and bait the throw. Yes, we remember. Uh, I forgot who, who, was it Jordan? I forgot who the defender was on the Bills who picked, did that pick six. But, yeah, he was, literally, he was sitting there. You, know, you could tell he did some film study. But that's another thing, too, because if you, you don't pass the ball that much, so that's one of the oh man i'm so glad you brought all this up man if you don't you don't pass the ball that much so when you do pass the ball people will be able to see like oh okay they lined up like this well since they don't pass the ball that much i don't have that much film study to do because they only have so many concepts they only have so many plays and i can really I, when they line up like this when that tight end's right there oh yeah okay i know what he's doing if that running back goes out, oh, oh yeah, yeah, I know what he's doing. When I, that wide receiver goes in motion, oh, yeah, 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 we know what's coming. When they line up in this formation, that formation, oh, yeah, yeah, we see it. Oh, yeah, we know what's coming. But if, if the Ravens don't have that many, that, that, that many variations of all of those passing plays, then teams are going to be, that, 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 it makes their film study that much easier for when, when the Ravens do have to pass. So anyway, oof, it's okay. All right. So defense is being able to read those because that's all in their film that they watch over and over is no bueno. That means no good. Anyway, he said, and of course, they'd be able to use more tried and true in the playoffs if they had more tried and true passing concepts in general. Hmm. Ravens will hold something back like this past year for the playoffs, but they can't hold enough back to get through two, three or four playoff games without getting in a tough spot and becoming very predictable. In the Titans playoff game, think how big that pass play was where Lamar ran all the way to the sideline and then got it to Andrews down the sideline. To me, without that, there's no huge Lamar touchdown run because that made the Titans play a little more honest. And yes, that was a play that really shifted momentum. I think it was like third and long, too. Lamar dropped back. He scrambled. He rolled out to his right. He was running, 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 looking, looking, looking down the sideline. And then at the last second, shoo, and he hit Mark Andrews. And I think that's actually been one of Lamar Jackson's staple plays, man. Ever since his rookie year. Since his rookie year, he's been doing those. Where he scrambles, he's running to the sidelines, that right sideline specifically. And then at the last second, he'll throw it. And now some of them have been dropped, but a lot of them have been completed. To where he'll throw it. And it'll, boom, right there in the receiver's hands. Right in the receiver's chest or tight end's chest, whoever it may be. But that play really, like, changed everything for the Ravens. Uh, he said that's how it's going to have to be going forward because defenses have to go against the Ravens with the stop the run game at all cost mentality. That's going to work if they sell out hard enough. That's true. We've seen that over time because that's what defenses have done, especially in the playoffs. They've been like, hey, just don't let them boys run. Don't let them run and we'll be straight. But if the Ravens can incorporate, and again, that's what, uh, that's what the new coaches they brought in for, T. Martin and Keith Williams, that's what they're for. That's what they're for. That's exactly what the Bravens brought them in for. Just to in, try to incorporate more. Just so the Ravens offense, their passing offense can do more. That's exactly what they're there for. So we'll see their impact. Uh, anyway, he said Lamar can get out of hand. Uh, oh, excuse me. Lamar can get out of that and still make the huge play. He just needs more than about three defenders worried about something besides him. Yes. Because if defenders are only worried about Lamar Jackson, they ain't really worried about anybody else, and the Ravens don't make them worry about anybody else, yeah, it, it becomes a big problem. That, that's why I say I don't mind getting Julio Jones. Anyway, uh, so I'll be watching this year to see different types of pass concepts that attack different parts of the fields in a regular season, and this year I'm going to pay close attention uh, to if I'm seeing the same ones over and over. That's a good point. Because... Us Ravens fans, when we would look at a lot of games, like we watch the offense, we would know what's coming. We would know what's coming. We would know who the ball was going to, whether it's a running play, passing play. We would know what's coming. 
And there'll be sometimes if they want to throw us off, it'd be like, whoa. But we didn't have too much of those whoa moments. Where we we didn't have too much of those whoa moments where we were like caught off guard by like, oh wow, I didn't I didn't see that coming. We did have some there. But we didn't have too many. So hopefully the Ravens, they can uh get a lot more unpredictable, especially when it comes to passing. Because that's that's some really good points you brought out. He said, everyone will remember Steve Smith Sr. and Kurt Warner's comments. Some of our friendly Ravens reporters like to point out that they are just talking heads when they say that and probably don't watch many Ravens games anyway. But most people forgot Rich Eisen brought on Greg Cassell to address this after Lamar was on his show and said the offense was too predictable. Cassell said the offense was uh, rudimentary. Have I convinced you that regular season volume of passing will tell us something about what to expect in the playoffs? Oh, that is a very, very uh, well thought out uh, and well put together question uh, about the Baltimore Ravens when it comes to the passing yards. Because it's not that passing yards mean everything, because we all obviously know that they don't, but more so passing concepts. Uh, and what he was saying again is that with the passing yards, sometimes it could tell us a story. It may not tell us the whole story, but some of the details of the story could let us know about this Ravens offense uh, and what they'll be able to do and what they'll incorporate and how much of that they will incorporate uh, in the regular season. So hopefully in the playoffs, you still be ready. Next question came from my boy Edwin M. He said, hey, Engraven, hope everything is good. I was wondering how come the Ravens never looked at Mitchell Schwartz to fill the need at right tackle. In my opinion, he is better than Alejandro Villanueva. Thank you for taking the time and God bless. Appreciate you, Edwin. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe they, uh, wasn't he hurt all last year? I, I, don't, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I really have no clue. I remember when um, the reports first came out that the older Ravens, they, uh, they brought in Alejandro Villanueva for a visit. I'm like, okay, cool. And then the reports came out, oh, Ravens are expected to sign him. I was like, okay, cool. But I was like, why would they announce this signing so early? Maybe they're really interested in signing somebody else. But they never brought in anybody else. So I guess they really loved him. They loved Alejandro. And they were like, hey, that guy, let's bring him in. Uh, let's get a little bad blood with these Steelers. Let's, let's do this thing. So um, I, I, I really don't know why. But they loved Alejandro enough to where they said, Mitchell Schwartz, <laughs> we don't need you. Next question came from my boy uh, Perry S. He said, hey, man, thanks for staying positive. We've spoken a few times on IG, and rather than hit you there, I'll ask it here. All right. I mean, if, if you would have asked it on IG, we would have talked about it, but it wouldn't be on questions from subscribers. So I appreciate it. He said, now we all kind of think, dare I say, no, Giro in the passing game don't really click. But uh, where it seems to be, if you listen and look at David Culley's comments about Hollywood, coupled with Steve Smith's comments, doesn't make it seem like he was part of the problem. He seemed either unqualified or just plain negative. On some level, him leaving could have been addition by subtraction. What do you think? You see, I'm thinking that very quietly the Ravens wide receiver room would have already improved just by replacing him with, as we say around here, by having some positive influence instead of the negativity. <laughs> I like that. And that's before you look at who they fill the spot with. And then factor in two heads are better than one. Okay, so I'm a bit excited, but I think the Ravens are playing all of this close to the chest. What do you think about that? Football uh, is almost back. Stay positive and thanks. I appreciate that. Um, so, David Culley. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I, I think... It seems as if you're one of the biggest comments you may be referring to. I know you didn't state it right here is the um, the one that he made about Hollywood. And I know that that was going around. It was very viral when he first got hired as a head coach for the Texans. And then uh, today is May 31st. So about a, a little less than a week ago, it became a little viral again. And it started making its ways around the air again, because before uh, it was just an audio clip when he first became head coach of the Texans. And then a little less than a week ago, there was a video clip with it, too, where you could actually see him saying it. And, and the clip was when he was, uh, I forgot what the reporter asked, but he was talking about Hollywood Brown. He was like, oh, yeah, they got Hollywood Brown. He's a good receiver, but I, I couldn't. He said, I can't call him Hollywood. He ain't done enough to be called Hollywood. And I know with, with Hollywood, a lot of people think, oh, man, Hollywood, why should he be called Hollywood? Da, 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 da. He's not, uh, he's not uh, one of the most known NFL wide receivers. He, he ain't done nothing in the league yet. Well, he has done some stuff in the league, so they already wrong. But 
he, he's called Hollywood Brown because of where he's from. He's from Hollywood, Florida. You know, a lot of people automatically, and, and I can understand why. Because I remember way before I moved to, to Florida, and uh, some people, or right when I, when I first moved to Florida, and some people talk about, oh, Hollywood. Like Hollywood, Florida. I was like, what, what is that? Because I didn't know anything. When, when, I, when, when I first moved here, I didn't know that that was an actual place. Like Hollywood, Florida? Okay. I didn't know that. So I know a lot of people not from Florida, and who don't know about Hollywood, Florida. And you could assume, you could, you could, I mean, obviously because of Hollywood, California, or whatever, uh, people were affiliated with that in Hollywood, like with the movies and the stuff and the stars. They think, oh man, that, they think that's what it's with. So maybe David Coley did the same thing. Um, but, and I, I know there have been some people like Steve Smith Sr. He talked about David Coley. He said that he, what did he say? He said David Coley just could not spot talent. I forgot exactly how Steve Smith Sr. worded it, though. Um, but I, I just don't know. I know uh, Harbaugh and Cully, they worked together before. They worked, worked together before in Philly, I believe. So, you know, ha ha hashtag Hood Harbaugh. Hashtag Hood Harbaugh, he is always putting on his boys. He, that is one thing. You could say so many things about John Harbaugh, but you can never, ever say that hey, he doesn't try to put on for his people, man. He does not. He you, he always puts on puts puts his boys on, man. Always. He's been doing it for his entirety of his career as a head coach. Harbaugh is one of them people that do not forget where they came from. He doesn't. He don't forget where he came from. He don't forget who he was out there in the trenches with. He don't forget none, who he came. He don't forget none of that stuff, man. None of it. He always putting his boys on, man. And even when he got to take his boys off. He still makes their resume look nice. Even when he got to take his boys off. Again, remember with, um, was it Marty Morningweg? When they were like, oh, do you want to be the... He was, get, he was getting fired. He was going to get fired. And Greg Roman was going to take his place. They're like, hey, do you, you want to be the passing game coordinator? And, and, uh, and, and he was like, no, I don't want to be the passing game coordinator. So oh, the Ravens and Marty Morningweg, they mutually parted ways. That looks so much better on your resume than saying, oh, you got fired. And we know, again, what Eric DeCosta said it a couple weeks ago in, in, in one of the presses. Uh, he said sometimes we'll even bring in, like, players and stuff. We'll have them in for a visit just to get their name circulating again. And I think Harbaugh, he can do the same thing, too, when it comes to his coaches, when he, he puts people on. Because the ah, Jaguars defensive coordinator. Oh, I think, I want to say Cullen, and he was our defensive line coach last year, put him on. And, and, and I mean, you, there's, there's so many different coaches and people that you could name that done got an opportunity. Like, and, and on the coaching staff, like even Jamil McClain. Jamil McClain, I believe he, he had to retire due to, um, well, he just retired. I, I think he, he retired due to injury. But him, Zach Orr, he had re retired due to injury. They put both of them boys on the staff, man. They put both of them boys on the staff. And they both played for Harbaugh. But both of them boys on the staff. And Zach, Zach Orr, I think he just got an opportunity. I want to say with the Jacksonville Jaguars. But I'm, I, I forget. But either way, Harbaugh is always putting people on. So I think with David Culley, since they go back, he was like, you know what? Okay. You are, what was he, the wide receiver coach, I think, I want to say? He was like, oh, you're going to be our wide receiver coach. I Look, man. Trust me. It's going to work. It's going to work. I got you. And they go, okay, cool, no problem. And under Harbaugh, like, there, there's a respect in the NFL uh, for people that are on the Ravens coaching staff. There really is. Um, so with David Coley, that opportunity presented itself, and then, boom, he's a head coach. He's a head coach. I think he was with the Ravens, what, two years, I think? And then, boom, promoted to head coach. They didn't even have to be offensive coordinator for the Ravens. Didn't have to, no, didn't have to be a QB coach for the Ravens. Head coach for the Houston Texans. So can it be addition by subtraction? It's exciting to see if it, if it is. It'll be really exciting to see if it is. Uh, so if Steve Smith Steve, Steve, Steve Sr. ends up being right. Um, but because I know I, I, I've heard a lot of, I, I've heard like mixed things. I, I wish I knew David Culley myself. I've heard a lot of mixed things about David Culley. From, um, I hear from, People who uh, like they 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 would always say oh he's a real players coach 
The players love David Coley. He got a real personal relationship with the players. They love him. And he would be down there on the sidelines, like, talking to him and stuff during the games and whatnot. Uh, then I hear from some people, other, some other people that say, oh, man, he, uh, he doesn't, doesn't seem like he was qualified. I, he just didn't seem like he knew what was going on. Da, da, da. So, hey, he's a head coach of the Texans, so we'll see how it goes over there. Now, I do think he's just a placeholder head coach. I think David Coley was just hired to try to, whew, try to just put out the fire over there with the Houston Texans and that whole just everything. And I think that he's just a placeholder until they bring on somebody else as a head coach. Maybe even, uh, who was it, Josh McCown, I think they were talking about, somebody else. But I, I just, I don't think he was hired to be their guy. I think he was hired, like, like and, and I hate to use him as an example because we obviously got love for him. But it reminds me of Tyrod Taylor. Tyrod Taylor, anybody that signs him nowadays, they don't bring him in so they could be like, okay, and I think, I want to say Texans even signed him. I think, yeah, I th I'm, Texans signed Tyrod Taylor, I think. But either way, um, any, when a team signs Tyrod Taylor, they don't sign him to, okay, you're going to be the guy. We're rolling with you now, man. No, they sign him as a, a placeholder for that next, till that next guy comes in. And with Tyrod Taylor, man, it's like, man, he, uh, I know he was a fifth-round pick. Um, and he in the beginning, he was just behind Joe Flacco, and Joe Flacco wasn't going anywhere. Um, so when Tyrod finally got his opportunity, he got his opportunity with the Bills, did his thing over there, but then after that, it was just, that was, that was it. That was the last time where it was like, okay, Tyrod, this is your team. That was it. Um, so shout out to, uh, shout out to Rex Ryan. Rex Ryan obviously knew him from when Rex Ryan was on the Ravens staff and whatnot, so he's like, hey, I know that boy, I'm gonna I'm put him on. So yeah, Rex Ryan, you know Rex Ryan, Rex Ryan another one, he'll put people on too. If he knows you, he will put you on. Um, so that's how it is with Harbaugh, but I feel like with David Culley, he's like the, um, hopefully it's not like this, but I just think that it is. Uh, it, it seems like his hire was like a Tyrod Taylor signing, where they just sign him to hold it down until they find who they really want. So, we just, we gotta see how it all works out, uh, with the, um, the additions of the new coaches, um, and just to, to we gotta hope that they have a voice, because they got a resume already, but we gotta hope that their resume was looked at and their credentials were looked at and, and the Ravens really incorporate what they know about these guys and what these guys know about wide receivers and development of them uh, into the Ravens. So it should be a fun season.